Hello everybody and welcome back. As you can see, the sim pit's getting used and there's been some interesting stuff with it. Not only have I used the sim pit, but I've had other people actually using it. There's gonna be a couple of changes. I'll walk you through. So the first change, we're not going to shorten this as much as I would love to have more space. This is how taller people get access to it. So the most I can cut off is like four inches. And I gotta keep this here that's kind of the back. The next thing, as nice as that would be to get rid of, if I'm only taking four inches off here, it's not making a huge difference, especially because there is a bit of space in this room. Might do eventually, but lower priority now. First thing we're gonna do today, from last time, I did in fact screw this down, so this is actually solid on there. Can't lift it up, but it's solid. First thing, this has got the 3D printed little cleat guys. Since I 3D printed them, they've been working great, but they don't quite stick. If you put enough pressure, they rotate. That's a very bad thing. Um, they're also really hard to use when I actually twist it. Oh, that one's smooth right now, but when you actually, there you go. When you actually get them tight, that noise is essentially layers, shifting, cutting, doesn't work very well. So I've got some rails. These guys should be about 24, these should be about 12. We're gonna see which ones I can actually mount on there. These are real ones. So we're going to use these as an actual clamping mechanism. They just slide in the little T-track and voila. This part's gonna poke up out of the hole and that'll be good. But first, I actually have to mount them. The question is, do I mount them on the top, on the bottom, etc.? So I'm gonna go look into that now. We're gonna get started on mounting these, and that's gonna be step one for the day. Did I say step one? I mean step two. We've gotta clean up that. So this was all, there were several USB hubs to get the vibe working, to get the monitor on so that I could actually see and help people with flying, where button switches are, point out stuff, see where they were in the world. Um, but I've got to kind of get things a little cleaned up so that I can actually work on the cockpit at the moment. So that's going to be step one. Okay, now the cockpit has some space. All the vibe stuff's over there. My six billion cables are all over there. Monitor's still where it is, doorway's still partially blocked, this stuff's good. That's all been moved over to the side, but now we have access to the cockpit. So the first thing, I'm going to pop these out, and then I'm going to put the rails over, see if I want to put this on top, if I want to put it under. We're going to take a look, see what works. Here we go. This is why we're replacing them. That plus the fact that to even get it off, I have to get underneath because these bolts have nuts that are not captured and yeah. So I'm gonna grab some blocks. All right, now I can reach under. So for now, this can come off or up. Can't really screw it down very easily. I guess I could put a piece of backing. Did not have these in mind when I first started this. The other option is to offset these, have four cold down points like this is supposed to actually have, and use the long ones here because those will go all the way. But when I move it, it kind of stabs your feet. So the other option, actually to put it underneath, but these are too small, and I still like that option more. So we're gonna put this underneath, which means the cockpit's gotta come out, up, this definitely has to come off. So we're gonna do that. So 
not destroy those. I like them. It's all lined up in the slot. Let's screw it in. Pull it to where it is, but it does not peek through. Good. Let's do the same with the other side. So, same thing. Put it in the hole. Screw it in. Cool. Another thing I would like to do is to actually run this underneath. Behind, so I actually need to drill a hole up there. I'm gonna go grab a drill bit. We're gonna drill a hole for USB. So the largest thing I have is a Christmas tree, so we're gonna use those. That was far more dusty than I was expecting. But if it's 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 good. Alright, let's put this back down, put the rudder pedals on, and see how it does. Flip that over so it doesn't get caught. Get any pills. I'll bring you guys over. Okay, the goal is to get these on top with all the washers. So, there's the first one. There's the second. There's the second. There it is. Before we lose the other side, throw this on there. Just get it started. Oh, can't even do that. This is actually cutting the rubber from the push. It. Perfect. Yay! Let's hope this doesn't stab me either. That would suck. It hits you in the foot. But there's so much rubber. A ton of squish. That is very promising. That'll do. Okay. That's probably too short for me. Let's check it. Whoop. Don't sit on the stick. Ooh, wow, that's got some serious grip. But it's also way too close. That there, that'll work. Oh, I like it. That's super neat. I'm kind of happy with that. We're gonna hook up all the rest of this stuff later. I'll probably do that on my own. But I think we're gonna head over to the computer and I'm gonna give you guys a design update on the panels. Okay, so we are over on the computer. I'm gonna kind of walk you through what we had before. This is kind of the general design. The right side really wasn't flushed out. There were just holes in a panel where they kind of lined up. These are what the previous panels were set up as. They're essentially, that one's a single layer. Those are dual layers. It's another dual layer. Most of them are dual layers and they could be 3D printed, but the dual layer doesn't give me the option to diffuse LEDs. Um, I could do it in the first layer with some other tips and tricks, etc. But it's just easiest to use three layers. That way I've got one for hardware mounting, so actually putting the LEDs in and holding them, one for diffusing the LED light, one for having text on them, but this does not account for it. This is essentially what I had beforehand. These were the uh, throttle mounts, those are the rails, this is kind of a mock-up of the seat. And here's just all the generic. This is essentially what I was starting with when we started on the cockpit. That was really, that all I had. These are super neat, but again, being redesigned. So this is where we really were starting about a month ago, where this is the plans that I was going off of. So now this is the more updated plans. These are kind of the old modules, just re-imported in, placed on a new frame. These are the modular housing. So these are just MDF spray painted with a light gray, kind of similar to what DCS has, kind of what the real world has. A little bit easier, just spray painted light gray on the outside. The inside will just be left alone. If I cut out all these beforehand, these might turn into a light gray, but we'll see on those. Then on the very top, we're gonna have little inserts we're gonna have threaded inserts in here for us to screw an M5 into. And then going into the actual panels, these are five layer panels. There's one on the bottom, like I said, hold the LEDs, that's gonna be a black layer. Um, then there's gonna be a diffusing layer, which is just gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be an opaque or slightly transparent white or clear. And that's gonna be spray painted black on the outside. And then on the very top one, this is gonna be a white layer spray painted black and then engraved with the text. Then we've got 
real full-size switches. Those are going to be really nice to upgrade to. So they're going to actually be cockpit size switches. We're going to use little M4 screws essentially that go all the way down. They've got a little nut on the back and we're going to use those to hold all three layers together instead of gluing them together. That way not only can I take it out and replace things, but I can also put them together pretty easily and I don't have to deal with glues and other stuff like that. If I wanted to, I could also use these as alignment pins and glue them together so that way they're pretty well permanently attached. But we'll open one of the modules and just kind of give you a little bit more in-depth detail. So this is the uh, external tanks where it's got the dumping for fuel, it has essentially your wing mode, and then it's got the probe extension retraction, and it's got this little guard there which I'm going to bend out of some aluminum. The really nice thing about these switches and the three layers using eighth inch is that the switches have a three eighths inch tall neck essentially, slightly less and we're going to use 3 eighths of an inch. So it's actually gonna line up almost perfectly so that they won't extrude or they won't stick up above. And the way that we're actually gonna interface with them is if I hide the white layer, we're gonna cut this middle layer a little bigger and then it's really just gonna clamp onto the bottom. We'll hide the transparent layer as well and you can see it's really just gonna screw onto there and it's going to clamp on this bottom piece. That way when we put the transparent layer on, it just sits inside this little cavity. And then when we put the top layer on, it has all the text as well as the, well, that's kind of where everything comes together. And then from the bottom view, all these switches, I did all this modeling because I found that the more you can model things, the more problems you find. But here's the nuts for those M4. These are M5 holes. And here are all the LEDs. There's going to be a ton of LEDs. I don't know if I need this many, so we're gonna do some test panels and we're gonna see how that goes. But this is essentially how the design of each of the panels is going to go. If I can cut these out, they actually work well and they plug in well, then we're just going to continue with this design. Currently, I have the left and right consoles designed just for the outside layer, I need to put some reinforcing in the sides, and I also need to figure out a better way of hooking them all together. So I'm probably going to run some stringers front to back, and we're going to have some side plates. But for now, this is the general shape that I need the outside to be. And then these are the four panels that I have designed right now. I'm going to continue moving backwards. There's two panels there, then there's a couple on the sides, and then I'm gonna move over to the left side. We're gonna finish designing all those. Then we're gonna do the throttle quadrant. This one's pretty much just a piece that goes across, but the throttles themselves are gonna be quite tricky to actually make. I might end up doing what a lot of other guys have done and just modify the Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas, but I would really rather make my own. That way I can get the exact grip that I'm looking for, I can get the depth, I can get finger lifts that are actually finger lifts and not just lift the whole throttle, stuff like that. So I can really customize it if I do it myself, but it's also going to take a lot of work. So to start with, we're going to do these panels, then we're going to move over to the right side, then I'm going to do the 45 panels, then we're going to move over to the front of the cockpit, and I'm actually going to build out the front. We're going to make the supports and just all the front pieces. Because realistically, the first thing that I need to do is build these left and right panels. The second thing I need to do is build this column with the 45s. And what I really need on there are the gear and the hook. Those are kind of the most important things out of this whole thing. And after that, maybe the MFCDs, those are probably important. But these guys are going to be much easier. And I've got a very different way of doing the electronics, but we'll dive into that in a little bit later of an episode once we actually kind of get there once i can really start diving into the prototype panel i'll kind of show you guys how i plan on doing the electronics but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing a little bit of the cockpit update and then a little bit of the panel update i'm going to kind of try and structure these similar to this in the future where we'll do a little bit of 
design updates and a little bit of physical updates depending on what we're building and what progress has been made. So thank you guys for joining along. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing these nice little panels that actually look kind of pretty at this point. And we'll see you guys in the next episode.